Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Oh, wow. It's been one whirlwind weather in California. We've had more rain this last week, this week, than ever before. So with that, it's incredible what happens in life and how I think we are to take life in strides and what we do when stress happens, when there is things that are blocks or little uh, stones that are thrown. I call them little walls and how I turn blocks and walls into what I like to call them orange cones. So uh, today I am in a different place. It's unexpected. I am at the hospital again, a different hospital. And today is for a family member. But I had to come live and be with you because it is Heal Talk Tuesdays at 12 o'clock. So what better way to talk about how stress happens, what we do with stress, how we cope with stress, and how we can have a few techniques and tools to deal with stress, right? So number one, when illness and something happens, especially for elders in our family, I think it's best to be collected and know that there is nothing emergency you can do uh, if you go into a panic there is no way that you can help someone else right and when you get anxious when you go out of control it's not necessarily helping the person who's in need so at this moment i don't even know uh, although i'm connected to the wi-fi am i coming through if this message is coming through because I don't know if I am uh, being viewed here anyhow so what do we do when something like this happens if you are in uh, any position like me at the age hello Adrian how are you I don't know is the message coming through okay is the Wi-Fi good just let me know just by uh, responding to it okay while I'm waiting for that loud and clear awesome awesome thank you so here I am at the hospital again as I was saying and uh, things that happen it's usually emergency for people who are about my age or any age actually when we have a family member who is elder who need attention it's something that it's expected at the same time it happens for anybody and God forbid when there is an emergency call or something it's what do we do to stay calm what do we do to manage our own calmness and realize that you have to take care of yourself stay calm Find a technique that grounds you and you remain more focused. More focused so you can deal with <clears throat> what is necessary, what is emergency, so that you can call the right people. So I've had a family member in the hospital and we had to take care of all this. And somehow everything works out and everything falls into place when you stay calm and by doing so is what I did I grounded myself and I said no matter what it is it's happening for me and what am I supposed to do with that here's one technique at the same moment that you need to respond ASAP we go into fight and flight and when we are in a flight and fight mode that means we are off balance 
What if at that very moment you just ground yourself and you go into just pause moment? When we pause, we pause ourselves. We pause for just a moment to refocus, recenter, rewind, and re-energize. Then we deal what, with what is necessary. Call the 911, call the hospital, call a family member, and you can see everything more in a calmer way. It's as if you, in your own mind, you can see everything falling into place. At the same time, when people go into a panic mode, their own heart starts beating. Uh, sometimes we have uh, sweaty palms. Sometimes we go into hyperventilation. And, and there's people who go into that panic and start either cussing, screaming, crying. And when you are in that position that your body starts reacting in a physical mode, instead of a calm mode, then everything starts happening to you. While it's happening for you and to you, because the body is going into a, what I like to think, the best thing to do, the best thing to do at that very moment is put your tongue up onto your palate. And as you massage the palate with your tongue, it in a way, it calms your body and you swallow. Make sure you swallow. Make sure you drink water so that you can replenish your communication throat chakra. When you do this, that means you are giving yourself oxygen and vitality. By doing that, at the same time, no matter what mode you are, in a panic mode, anxiety mode, whatever, to calm yourself, you put those two you put your fingers in a real hard fist and then you open it. You put it into a fist, you open it. You put it into a fist, you open it. By doing this, your body keeps doing something while your mind is focusing on what you have to do. Okay? I hope this technique helps you when you are going into a panic and anxiety or no matter who is in a panic and anxiety, this is the best technique for you to utilize for yourself or someone else. That said, now you've got your palate, you've got oxygen going inside, you're doing that contraction and expansion with your hand, and the hand in itself means I am in control. Instead of being out of control, by putting your fists together and then releasing it, you are mentally, physically, and emotionally giving yourself permission to be in control. Thus, now you can concentrate on the person you need to, on the task you need to, or the person in need, either emergency, in the hospital, or someone who's next to you. So, now, what do we do when we get emotionally um, out of control. That's the time that you have to pamper yourself. Yes, the fight, flight, now we are in the pause mode. At that very moment, the first thing you do is, here's a technique. You tap your mind to open your mind and you tap your heart just the same way as we tap a child. Tap upon your scapula tap upon your heart or just gently put your hand on your heart on your chest and by doing so just calm yourself for just three seconds one two three just by doing this by touching your heart touching your chest in a way you are bringing a calmness to your heart to your body the same way as we do to a baby the same way as we do to a loved one when we hug them. So those are small little techniques 
that you can do. I was talking to a friend yesterday and there was another uh, a, a, an issue happening at her house. And when everything was going, she had to inhale her own asthma inhaler. And she said, I am so overwhelmed that I forget to do my own tech uh, own medication. I have I forget to take my own medication, so I go into this asthma attack. What I like to say is everyone have this much and in our talk, and I said, Don't you think you have to take your medication to give yourself oxygen? She says, Yeah, sometimes it doesn't matter. Well, my message to all of you, my viewers, every single one of you, you do matter. So what we do in hypnotherapy is in my office, I work my, with my clients to let them know to make any change when you believe that you don't matter is truly to understand you do. You matter more than you give yourself credit. You matter to your loved ones and you matter to so many even though when you don't hear it, you don't feel it, okay? You matter to yourself and that is the most important person that wants your attention, needs your attention, and wants your validation. So in hypnosis, in hypnotherapy, what we do is we evoke what was. Sometimes there is blocks, sometimes there is hindrance, and if you feel that there is blocks or walls in your way when you think you don't matter, let me help you. We'll turn those blocks, unblock them. We'll play blocks with it and pull them out. And if you dare feel that there is a wall, we'll turn the walls into just curtains so we can open them much easier. And there's times that I want you to know those barriers, we can turn them into orange cones so you can walk them, move them, walk around it, and just lift it up. Lifting you and knowing that you matter, having that self-pride to care for yourself and for the ones who matter to you is the best gift that you can give to yourself. Today I'm going to cut it short, but this week so many good things is happening at Heal Within, not only helping you to heal within and your loved ones, but knowing how to be empowered, how to empower yourself, and guess what? January, end of this January, actually third week, January 21, I'm having a group mindfulness uh, guided visualization, even teaching self-hypnosis. So by all means, call us, find out about us. Uh, we will put it up on the website tomorrow. It is on Glendale Meditation. If you are a, a part of Meetup, you can find us there. And for any other information, call us. We'll have all the information on our website and check Heal Within uh, website. Also, Meetup meditation in Glendale. Um, if you are here live, perfect. If you are watching this on a replay, just uh, put replay or ask me any questions. I respond to all the comments. Until next week, I bid you goodbye. God bless you and may the universal light be with you. Until see, see you next week. Bye-bye y'all.